Yesterday, Google released a new version of Gemini 2.5 Pro, and the thing that everybody always thought would happen but never happened finally just happened. They built arguably the best coding AI model of all time, currently ranking number one in all LM arenas. The timing for this release is surprising, because their annual developer conference Google I.O. is just two weeks away, and that's where they normally hype up their best new tech. We've been applying AI to make AI, AI first, generative AI, AI with AI. Which could only mean that they must have something even better bigger cooking, like maybe Gemini 3 or Gemini 2.5 Ultra. Only time will tell, but one thing we do know for sure, thanks to an accidentally published blog post, is that the Android 16 UI is getting a major overhaul, to be more emotional and expressive. In today's video, we'll try out Google's latest model and look at other recent developments in the AI space that every vibe coder needs to know about. It is May 7th, 2025, and you're watching The Code Report. Before we talk about Gemini, another huge development is that OpenAI is abandoning its plans to convert to a for-profit company. Many people, and especially Elon Musk, were outraged at the idea of OpenAI making money. And this headline sounds like a huge win for humanity. But with any announcement like this, the devil is in the details. And what we find is that the current Capped Profit LLC will become an uncapped profit public benefit corporation. The key word there being uncapped profit. The nonprofit will continue to oversee and be a shareholder in the PBC, and this approach has much better optics for OpenAI, but it paves the way for them to make tons of money without much friction. All they have to do is pretend that AI is super scary, and convince politicians that they're trying really hard to keep it in a cage to benefit the public. It's worth noting that Anthropic and XAI are also public benefit corporations. Now, despite having these super advanced AI models, OpenAI just agreed to acquire Windsurf, a VS Code fork, for an incredible $3 billion. Meanwhile, OpenAI is claiming mean that their AI is one of the top 50 programmers in the world. Impressive, but that begs the question, why pay $3 billion for a VS Code fork when you could just build one with your own AI? But OpenAI is feeling less and less dominant in the AI space every day. Gemini 2.5 is completely dominating LM Arena, including the coding and web dev arenas, which is like a blind taste test where people choose the best LLM based on actual responses. However, if we look at Livebench, which takes a more scientific approach and tries to provide LLMs with contamination-free questions, questions, you'll find that OpenAI is still on top and Gemini falls behind. Furthermore, it appears Gemini falls behind on its own benchmarks compared to the last version they released, except when it comes to coding. Like I've said many times before though, never trust benchmarks and just try it for yourself. The first test I usually do is to see if it can generate Svelte 5 room code. And surprisingly, Gemini 2.5 almost did it right. I prompted it for a simple to-do app, and the actual syntax looks correct, although it wasn't doing things correctly and the app itself didn't actually run. That's disappointing but at least it's a step in the right direction. The next thing I had it do was vibe code a game from scratch with 3JS, and the end result was pretty solid, but not significantly better than any of the other models I've tried. But one thing about Gemini is that it's especially good with vision prompts. So what I did is sketch out my application on a piece of toilet paper, then I asked it to build a full stack application with a Postgres database, and the end result actually had some pretty solid vibes. But now the more important decision is where do we deploy it? Well, that's why you need to know about Savala, the sponsor of today's video. If you're old enough to remember Heroku, Savala is like a superior modern successor, where you can deploy entire full-stack applications, databases, and static websites, all backed by Google Kubernetes Engine and Cloudflare, without the pain of all these YAML configs. We can easily ship our app by first connecting a Git repo or Docker image to Savala, provision some resources, and then click the deploy button. What's especially awesome is that they just released a database studio that allows us to manage our database directly from their web UI. All infrastructure and data can be easily managed in one place. Give Savala a try for free with $50 in free credits using the link below. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.